I'm Paul Bradshaw, I run the Masters in Online Journalism at Birmingham City University and I also work with the BBC in Birmingham. I think the influence of programmers uh, and particularly the civic tech movement, the open data movement, the access to information movement, hacktivism, um, all of these uh, you know, um, cultures have uh, had an impact on journalism as people from those cultures have done journalistic projects. I think some of the best data journalism, some of the most influential data journalism in the last 20 years has come from outside of journalism. It's come from programmers doing the role that traditionally journalists would do. Uh, my society, for me, is one of the biggest uh, influences in data journalism and doesn't get mentioned in histories of journalism where it should be. Um, because what my society did is what the um, uh, what Hansard did in the 18th century with Parliament in terms of opening up political information uh, to scrutiny and making it possible for people to know what questions to ask, um, and you know so that drive towards transparency, that drive towards usefulness um, and engagement, you know I think that has made inroads into journalism at the same time as journalism is trying to justify its its importance itself um, and so what I said in my talk was that um, at the beginning of the 20th century journalism reinvented itself as an objective profession um, not necessarily one that was politically partisan and I think we're seeing the same sort of invention, reinvention now because the commercial context has changed. Journalism became objective partly so that it could tap into advertising markets and mass markets. Those markets are no longer going to be the primary revenue for journalism. So likewise it needs to find a way to engage with audiences that might tap more into membership, subscriptions, things like that. And transparency is a really important element in that. Well, I think hopefully we're starting to move beyond a stage where data is a novelty and as journalists we are um, inspired by the potential of what we can do with data. I hope we're moving beyond that now to a stage where we actually scrutinise data itself a bit more closely and we start to look at the role that data plays in our lives um, and how, as journalists, we can hold that power, the power of data, to account. Because, as uh, Nicholas Diakopoulos mentioned, uh, you know, algorithms are becoming an increasingly powerful aspect of our lives. Lawrence Lessig's book, Code, was, was very um, prescient about how code acts as, as a law which uh, shapes and restricts what we can do. So as journalists we need to look at those laws, those codes, and whether they are just and, uh, and, and even laws in the way that they affect people and the way that they shape our lives. And when decisions are made on the basis of power and action is made on the basis of power, um, again, is that are those judgments based on the right data, on correct data? Those are the questions I think that um, journalism should be asking in the next 10 years. Mm. The first thing I would say if you're getting started with data journalism is not to build it up too much. Uh, I, I don't like the way that sometimes think data journalism has to be big and spectacular. New York Times, Guardian, WikiLeaks you know, these massive projects. Um, data journalism can be very, very simple. It can be one number, it can be one chart, and that's probably where you should start, is, is just um, set yourself a, a challenge which is, um, if you like, rigorous in terms of data. It develops your skills, um, but it isn't such a big task that it becomes a chore, it becomes something that, that you don't enjoy. So start with something you enjoy, something that's simple, um, and, and build from there and do increasingly difficult things. Um, the second thing I would say about data journalism is, um, you know, learn basic techniques with spreadsheets. Um, I, I wrote a book called Finding Stories in Spreadsheets, which outlines all sorts of different things you can do with different types of stories. 
Um, and then uh, I think after that, um, read up just basic statistics books like um, How to Lie with Statistics by Daryl Huff, which is about 60 years old now. It's a tiny book. You can read it in a day, but it just covers that basic knowledge that you need. Um, and then just have fun, you know, make pretty pictures, make maps, make charts, make infographics. Um, there's loads of tools out there to create timelines. Um, and, you know, the, the more you play around, the more creativity you, you can experiment with, then the more ideas you have, the more uh, you're aware of what's possible. So I, I'll add something else as well to that, which is work with others. Um, if you can get to a Hacks and Hackers meetup, or some sort of local meetup with programmers and coders. Uh, you go to somewhere like meetup.com and look for um, those sorts of events locally. Um, you can even organize your own Hacks and Hackers meetup because uh, in data journalism, often it, it's a lot better if you're working with other people. You might have journalism skills, someone else might have design skills, someone else might have web development skills, someone might understand freedom of information laws. Um, and data journalism at its best is, is when it's collaborative. Don't expect to know everything yourself. There's so much to it. Um, so do the simple things, but for the bigger projects, work with others and you can do some really exciting things.